Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MacTube. In this video, we are going to discuss something very 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 important for the applied students. That is, we are going to learn the application of analytic function. Now look at this, there are two things that you have to remember. If you are a math major student, you should focus on how we found all these things, the theory behind everything. But an applied student, an engineering student or a physics student who is using mathematics, you don't have to worry too much about the mathematical part. Rather, you should be focused on the methods. That is exactly what we were doing in the last videos. And the second thing, where do you use these things? And in this lesson, we are going to learn something which is extremely important for you. That is called orthogonal trajectory and the complex potential. Okay, let's start. So before we start, you have to understand note number one. So we are going to understand a few things. So the real part and the imaginary part of an analytic function, not any complex function, but an analytic function will balance the Laplace equation. Means they are harmonic so basically that's exactly what we proved and proved and proved in the previous video uxx plus uyy equal to zero vxx plus vyy equal to zero now the second thing you have to understand is extra 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 important if you want we can go for the proof but i'm not going to teach the proof right now so we have a complex function u plus iv i'm being very specific u is a function created by x and y v is a function in x and y i made a rough graph can you see u and v so what i did is i took the real part and the complex part and i created two functions by equating it to some function and theoretically the theory which i didn't teach here you will always, always, always be able to find A and B in such a way that the curves are perpendicular. And they are called orthogonal trajectories. That means the two curves which stay perpendicular for some value of A and B. Okay, I can make you understand with the graphics. Okay, we have the function f of z equal to z square. That is the red one and the green one red is x square minus y square equal to some constant i'm putting different constant that's why you're getting variable curve now the imaginary part 2xy equal to different different constant and what we know is the red curve will always find a green partner which is perpendicular and if the red is able to find a green partner they will be orthogonal trajectories now look at this. This is the function e power z. So basically that will be e power x cos y, e power x sin y. So for different different values, the black one will find a purple partner, which are perpendicular to each other. They are called orthogonal trajectories. And now the last one, f of z equal to z to the power 3. And red is the real part, green is the imaginary part. So, according to the theory, the red will always find a perpendicular partner, the green one. So, I hope you are able to understand. Can you see? The red tangent is perpendicular to the green tangent. By the way, if curves are perpendicular, then the tangents at that point will be perpendicular. Okay. Now, once more, the real part and imaginary part of an analytic function are harmonic. Second one, if you have a harmonic function, you can always find a perpendicular partner for the real and the perpendicular partner for the imaginary. Okay, now in the last video we learned to find V when U is given and to find U when V is given. Now look at this. That's it. If you understand this simple fact then you can do any application question that they are going to ask in the math exam. In your applied subject, 
they are going to give you the real part and they are going to ask you the imaginary part that's exactly what we did in the last two videos but these people use some different names can you look at this in electrostatics and gravitational field the real part imaginary part has the names equipotential line and line of force so in the problem they are going to give you one of them and ask the other one in fluid flow in heat transfer in electric current they are always going to ask you find the orthogonal trajectory so basically they are called streamlines and equipotential lines now specifically specifically in electrostatics equipotential line and line of force in heat transfer isothermal and heat flow lines now look at this as a mathematician i don't care they are giving me the real part and they call it with the funny letter phi and they will ask me find psi or they will give me psi and find phi but all i see is they have given me u and i'll find v they give me v and then i find u and they are very happy and if i find the function they call it complex potential now let's quickly do two problems and make it like super clear so look at this you can note down the two problems so there is a fluid flow problem come on just like i told you they have given the velocity potential if you still don't understand look at the letter they are using they have given the real part because normally in the applications it will be phi plus i into psi come on that is our u plus iv so they gave you u they want v and they call it a funny name stream function and they are asking you what is the complex potential what is that the function f look at the second problem heat transfer problem it is just an application look they have given you the heat flow lines what do you mean by heat flow lines the imaginary part and they want the real part okay let's do one problem very quickly okay so if you are using stmatube don't forget subscribe and support okay let's do the first question so what is given phi is given x squared minus y squared you can prove that this function is harmonic and if it is harmonic we can find the harmonic conjugate so phi x is equal to 2x phi xx will be 2 phi y is equal to minus 2y phi yy is equal to minus 2 we did tough questions so this is going to be super easy now look at this now i'll say oh the given function is harmonic means it balances the laplace equation that is phi xx plus phi yy equal to zero one warning don't watch this video without watching the last two videos it's a continuation okay now i'm going to write let f equal to phi plus i psi be the required function if you don't want to sound funny you can simply call it u plus iv but sadly they use that letter so i cannot change it so the derivative f dash of z is equal to phi x plus i psi x now i'll apply the cr equation so uh, what was the cr equation ux equal to vy that means phi x is equal to psi y and u y equal to minus v x that means phi y is equal to minus psi x so f dash of z equal to phi x minus i phi y so f dash of z equal to phi x is 2x minus minus will be plus i into 2y now i'll apply mill thompson method and get it in terms of z so 2 z Come on look at this this is called the complex potential can you see they are asking the complex potential they may use a different name according to the application but basically this is exactly what you have to do okay now let's integrate so we get uh, integral 2z dz so fz equal to z square plus c 
Now look at this. This is the complex potential. This is exactly what they asked. They might use a different name in a different application, but that is exactly what they want. Now the last part. Earlier we used to call it u plus iv. Now I'm going to call it phi plus i psi is equal to x plus iy the whole square plus c. So phi plus i psi is equal to x square uh, plus 2xiy plus i square y square plus c. Phi plus i psi is equal to x square minus y square because i square is minus 1 plus i into 2xy plus c. Now they have given phi. Look, we want the imaginary part. So I got psi is equal to 2xy plus c. That's it. So this is the harmonic conjugate. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do they call it? The stream function. Now let me ask you one question. Do you want me to do this question or do you want to try it yourself? I'll strongly recommend try it yourself, but I'll give a hint. This is a heat transfer problem. But as a mathematician, I know that they have given the imaginary part. It's kind of like they have given you V. And they are asking you, what is the value of U? Try it, try it. And also they are asking the complex potential. That means you have to find the function. So that's it. I'll be back with more videos like this. So till then, my friends, bye.